Well, that worked. Everybody got nice and quiet. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. I am so pleased to be here with you this morning. I'm the Reverend Rosemary Morrison, and it is my pleasure and honor to serve this congregation. And this morning, I am going to be your service leader and reader, and others are going to be delivering the message and singing, helping us worship this morning. So um, I would like to get the announcements out of the way first thing. So we have a couple of announcements. Pauline, why don't you start us off? My name is Pauline Atwood, and I'm uh, one of the facilitators for Soul Matters. I just want to tell you that today is our very first meeting of the year, and it's going to be right after the service. Lots of things going on, but Soul Matters is one of them. So I invite you to come and uh, just be with us and attend. And if you are already a member, remember that uh, we'll rejoin. Okay, thank you. There was one other person that told me. It's at the end. Okay. And I have one announcement. We have a new initiative starting this Wednesday at 7.30. The Reverend David... Reverend Dr. David Fedeke is going to be putting on a writing workshop, and he is a published and um, local well-known author, and uh, he's been putting on these workshops in different areas, and he has offered to put it on for us. The information, more of the information is in the newsletter. There's a link to it, and he's asking people to come and, and explore their muse and learn different ways of writing, and we'll be offering opportunities even to be reading some of those writings. So that's at 7.30 here in the big classroom, so the first classroom over on the other side there, 7.30 Wednesdays, and it's going to be every second Wednesday. Should be really interesting. The Unitarian Church of Edmonton is a liberal, religious, multi-generational community. We celebrate a rich mosaic of free-thinking, spiritual questing individuals joined in common support and in action. And we welcome diversity, pursue the common good, and work for justice. We believe in the compassion of the individual heart, the warmth of community, and the search for meaning in our lives. Uh, we gather this morning in gratitude on Treaty 6 land and the home of the Métis. May we be good ancestors to this land and may we respect the land that has been given to us. And so we begin this special hour together and, I so, and in doing so I invite you to quiet yourselves, your spirit, your devices, especially your devices, <laughs> and so that we can enjoy this time, to this special hour together. Thank you. 
I would like to invite Star Curry up to light our chalice for us this morning. The chalice is the symbol of our faith, and we, along with every and most every congregation, you, you congregation, light a chalice. And as we light this flame, may we hear what it has to say. Come back to the center, it calls. Return to the quiet, it whispers. The quiet we long for and that longs for us. From this stillness always a voice arises, if we let it. So come, friends. Come, let us listen once again. Let us find that flame inside that guides us back home. Good morning, everyone. My name is Gordon Ritchie. My pronouns are he, him. Welcome. It's lovely to be together this morning. Our first hymn is one that may seem or may be new for some of you. It's certainly not for the choir. We've sung it before. It's written by Reverend Christopher New, who is on staff at the Southminster Steinhauer Church. Christopher is quite the prolific writer, and uh, we have certainly been enjoying a lot of his music over the last little while. It's a tune called Life's Sacredness. Uh, four verses. All we need to do is change one word at the beginning of each verse. Uh, otherwise, the melody goes, on, uh, goes uh, along on its merry way. So um, we'll invite you to rise as you're willing and able as we join together in singing Life's Sacredness.
first reading today is by Howard Thurman, Center Down. How good it is to center down, to sit quietly and see oneself pass by. The streets of our minds seethe with endless traffic. Our spirits resound with clashings, with noisy silences, with something deep which hungers and thirsts for the still moment and the resting lull. The questions persist. persist. What are we doing with our lives? What are the motives that order our days? What is the end of our doing? What are, where are we trying to go? Over and over, the questions beat in upon the waiting moment. As we listen, floating up through all the jangling echoes of our turbulence, there is a sound of another kind, a deeper note, which only the stillness of the heart makes clear. It moves directly to the core of our beings. Our questions are answered, our spirits refreshed, and we move back into the traffic of our daily round with the peace of the eternal in our step. How good it is to center down. Thank you, Reverend Rosemary. There are many things that I admire about this community here at UCE. One of the things that I certainly admire is that we are self-governing and self-supporting. This means that we provide all the financial support for our many ministries from among ourselves. That's dedication. That's commitment. Another thing that I admire is that in addition to supporting the work of this church, we support organizations outside our walls. For the month of October, one half of the unidentified cash received will be shared with Camp Firefly. And as the ushers pass the plates around to collect our offering, I would like to tell you a little bit more about Camp Firefly. Camp Firefly is a leadership retreat for queer and trans youth, ages 14 to 24. In a fun and social environment, campers develop skills that would positively positively impact their lives, homes, schools, and communities. Educational and art workshops, indigenous programming, nature, and a supportive team create a safe space for emerging change makers to learn, to explore their identity, and build resistance. I gotta say I love how first of all they refer to these individuals as campers, but I also really, really love that they also refer to them as change makers. For those in the sanctuary, you can use the envelopes that are found in the back of your hardcover hymn books if you wish to receive a tax receipt for your gift. Please indicate on the envelope your, your contact information so that we can send you a tax receipt at year end. Many of our members and friends give monthly or annually through automatic withdrawal from their accounts, and we are very grateful for that. For those of you who are online, you're welcome to head to the Camp Firefly website uh, to make a donation. At this time, we will have a time for candles later on in the, in the service, but I'd like to ask Reverend Rosemary to light a candle at this time for those who work with Camp Firefly, for those who are on staff, for those who volunteer of their time, but more importantly, for those who need a place like Camp Firefly. I can't imagine how my life would have been different if Camp Firefly was around when I was between 14 to 24 years old. I wish that sometimes maybe I could go back in time, but may this light be a beacon for them to know that Camp Firefly is a place that is safe and supportive, and may that light also draw them to a place like this at UCE, also to know that they are safe and loved. We thank you for your generosity and for your support. With our time, our talents, and our money, we support the work of this community and the Unitarian Universalist tradition. Let us join together in singing, From You I Receive.
The next reading that our service creators have chosen is called One Half of Language is to Listen, and this is by Jacob Trapp. If it is language that makes us human, one half of language is to listen. Silence can exist without speech, but speech cannot live without silence. Listen to the speech of others. Listen even more to their silence. To pray is to listen to the revelations of nature, to the meaning of events. To listen to music is to listen also to silence and to find the stillness deepened and enriched. We will now respond with a a hymn called Find a Stillness, hymn number 352 in the gray hymnals, and the words will appear behind me. And I invite you to stay seated for this hymn. The Soul Matters theme, Pauline talked a little bit about the, the theme of our, the, their Soul Matters meeting this after church today, but in case you hadn't noticed, the theme for this month is deep listening, and that is what we are exploring this morning and throughout the rest of the month, deep listening. The next reading is How to Survive the Apocalypse by Reverend Sean Parker Dennison. First, learn to listen. Not only for enemies around corners in hidden places, but for the faint footsteps of hope and the whisper of resistance. Hone your skills, aim your heart toward kindness, and stockpile second chances. Under the weight of destruction, we will need the stronger shelter of forgiveness and the deeper wells that give the sweet water of welcome. We have a place for you. We have a place for you. When the world ends, we must not add destruction to destruction, not accept a beggar's bargain to fight death with more death in order to survive the apocalypse, any apocalypse at all, we have to give up. The counterfeit currency of self-sufficiency, the mistaken addiction to competition, and the lie that the last to die has somehow survived. It is our custom in Unitarian Universalist congregations to light candles of care and concern. We have set up two stations for you, and if you are new here, what we ask you to do is take a taper, 
from the first basket. So we'll line up on the two sides to take a taper from the first basket, light it, and then light your candle and douse it in the water. And if you are new, just go, don't go first and you should be okay. And watch what other people are doing. And we light candles of care and concern to acknowledge that we have complex emotions, complex beings. That, and sometimes it's just to listen to the spirit within us, to those around us. The tables are ready. I invite you now to light candles of care and concern. Thank you to everyone that lit, lit candles to thank you to, for being here. And I would like to ask Pauline to light one last candle for us to hold all our cares and concerns unspoken, perhaps unthought of even, perhaps yet to come. And the choir responds with a piece from, written by Gordon Ritchie himself. There is a love. Did you want to say anything about this piece? Yes. Excellent. I always need to try and not get verklempt when I talk about a piece before the choir sings. Um, simple little song, simple message, repetitive words. Sing along if you wish.
Good morning, my name is Karen Mills. My pronouns are she, her, and I have the big fun of being co-director of Coriolis and one of your co-service leaders this morning. And when I was getting ready for this service, I had the theme of deep listening from Soul Matters, and so I was looking through different readings and different sources and doing a lot of thinking about listening. Um, and I came across a reflection on deep listening from a writer named Brother Fap Lin. He's a Zen Buddhist monk who actually uh, did his training under Thich Nhat Hanh at Plum Village in 2008. And he composed a lot of that community's music. And before he um, was studying to be a monk, he studied mathematics at Cambridge, but he also worked professionally as a composer. And I thought, he probably knows a thing or two about listening. And when I read his writing, he certainly does. So here's what he had to say. He said, I think we all know what it's like to not be listened to, to not be heard deeply. When somebody is only half listening to us, something inside of us shrivels up, and we no longer want to share our deepest truth because that person isn't really there for us. And that makes me wonder if maybe the world is a little sad that we haven't been listening. Maybe the birds are sad. Maybe the wind is sad that we haven't listened to her. But it's really interesting to just sit outside and see how much we can listen. And then to notice how much mental commentary there is. How quickly our mind starts to chatter and comment on what we're listening to or identify it. Oh, that's such and such a bird song and then to come back to the sound. There isn't really any way to do that other than by also bringing our mind back to our body. And the best vehicle for that, I find, is breath. Somehow, when I'm with my breath, my mind gets a little quieter, and I find myself more present to an arising of sound that isn't really outside of me, nor exactly inside of me. There isn't really any distinct me or any distinct sound. There's an arising of sound which I can be present with, or not. And the more I let myself sink back into the presence of that sound arising, the better I feel and the more deeply I start to hear. It's not having thoughts about what I'm hearing, it's just hearing it. And when I hear what's arising in the present moment without grasping at it or trying to name it or wanting more of it or pushing it away, there's an ease. There's an aimlessness. In that space, I start to hear myself. I might hear a feeling that was in the background until that moment, but now it has space. I start to dissolve the boundary between me and the world and I start to reconnect. In that kind of listening, it's clear that there is no hard boundary around me, isolating me or separating me. Instead, there's just a wonderful mystery, which is also joyful, aware, and awake. And I'll end that part of the reading there. So much of this reading resonated with me, particularly the mental commentary part. Um, I have what I often call a busy brain, and it's like our earlier reading by Howard Thurman when it said, the streets of our minds seethe with endless traffic. I was like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and it said, you know, the deeper notes must make their way up through jangling echoes of our turbulence. And I thought, oh, that, <laughs> he, he knows me. Um, my friend calls it monkey mind, and uh, that's a term that he borrowed from Buddhist teachings, but it's the state of restlessness or fickleness or not having control over our own thoughts. Um, and he used to, when it got really bad, just say, monkeys, be quiet. And I get that. <laughs> I know what that needs every once in a while. And so when I read that and started thinking of my busy brain and the chattering monkeys, it also made me wonder that given all this noise, I wonder if we're actually becoming hard of hearing in a personal sense. And could it be that many of us are actually deaf to ourselves? And if we don't make an effort to still our minds, find a silence and listen deeply to our inner voice, might the consequences be the same 
as losing our hearing. So the impacts of hearing loss are deep and they're profound. They include a loss of the ability to communicate with others, delayed language development in children, and all of that can lead to isolation and loneliness and frustration. Hearing loss can cause people to feel awkward, shamed, inadequate, or exhausted in social situations. And I think even for those of us who don't have advanced hearing loss, I think everybody has some hearing loss by this point, um, you know when you've been in a, in a noisy room and you're trying to follow a conversation and you can't, it's really tiring by the end of the night and you miss pieces and you make up pieces and find out later that perhaps you've made up two separate conversations. Um, that's, all, that's all hard and that kind of leaves us with that sense of unease. And so it got me to thinking that all of these symptoms of being hard of hearing are very much the same as when we can't hear our own inner voices, when we don't take that time to listen. We miss the signals that our body's trying to give us, which sometimes, if we don't listen long enough, end up showing up in illness or extreme fatigue or more marked symptoms. We may feel awkward or shamed or inadequate or exhausted because our own voice, the one that knows our self-worth and the one that knows the goodness within us and our capabilities and our dreams, just cannot be heard over the shouting of the social media and the advertisements and all the messages we get every day that tell us we're not good enough, we're not rich enough, we're not in style enough, we're not enough. And so perhaps part of us is a little sad because we're not really listening. Perhaps some of us is shriveled up because we don't feel like we're being heard. In the meditation reading that's coming up next, there are two, I think, remarkable lines, and they really stopped me in my tracks. They are, who we listen to is who we become, and what we listen for determines our path. So who we listen to is who we become, and what we listen for determines our path. To me, this says, to become our best selves, shouldn't we listen to what our own inner voice has to tell us? But if we can't get our monkeys to be quiet for long enough to literally hear ourselves think, what happens? Well, I think our opening reading was on the right track when it invited us to return to the quiet, the quiet we long for and that longs for us. From this stillness, always a voice arises if we let it. Brother Lin, in, our, in the earlier reading, said that he found meditation and breath work helpful. And I, too, have found that. And uh, mindful breathing and some exercises, just to slow myself down enough and give my monkeys some time off um, that we can actually hear. But I came across another practice that I wanted to share this morning. Um, that probably isn't one, it's, it was designed actually in a teaching uh, style and you know, may not have been thought for personal use, but I think it is just as useful for that. Uh, I was talking with a teacher friend of mine, I work in public education, so that happens a lot, and they were really excited because they were telling me about this workshop that they had just gone to and a pedagogy of listening. And uh, they, you know, I said I was intrigued about that. I hadn't really heard of a pedagogy of listening. That's not usually from the teacher side, you get a pedagogy of telling or delivering out, not coming in. And so um, she shared an article with me and that talked about this practice. And the article included an interview with a teacher named Zaretta Hammond, who explained that when we listen and listen well, we communicate a deep honor for and an authentic interest in the life of the person we're listening to. And I thought, oh, a deep honor for and an authentic interest in. Wouldn't that be an amazing gift to give ourselves? And so she shared the four steps for committing to listening with grace. So I love that it's a commitment that you make, and I love that it's listening with grace. The first step is to give one's full attention to the speaker and to what is being said. The second is to try and understand the feeling behind the words 
and be sensitive to the emotions being expressed. So we all know that the words are only a small fraction of the communication that we get when we're speaking to one another. So trying to be attentive to all of the communication that's coming through. The third one, probably the part I find the hardest, suspend judgment and listen with compassion. And there was subtext that went beyond that that said, don't listen to respond, listen to receive. And I was like, oh, okay. And the fourth one I thought was really interesting, honor the speaker's cultural way of communicating. And I think for me, part of that ties in with suspending judgment. If there's someone who uses grammar that maybe I don't think is correct, or someone who speaks more slowly, somebody who has a particular accent, sometimes that affects the way that we hear. But if we can suspend that, and again, listen for that whole message, the feelings, the thoughts that underlie that, what they're really trying to communicate, I thought, what, what a great lesson. So I love this practice. I think it will be a challenge for me <laughs> for a long time to come. Um, but it's a challenge that I'm willing to take. And so I will end by sharing the end of the article with you because it speaks to exactly that. Adopting a pedagogy of listening is not always easy. It takes intentional, persistent practice on our part and patience with ourselves. Difficult? You bet. But so worth the effort. Amen and blessed be. And so we practice. I invite you into a time and spirit of meditation and quietness. I invite you to take a couple of long, deep, cleansing breaths. Maybe make some noise with me in and out. Let's do that again and listen. I invite you to allow the gravity that is part of our everyday experience pull you into the chair ever so much. Let your body rest. Let that gravity allow your muscles to let go, knowing you are held, held by the earth, held by spirit, held by love, held by all that you find worthy. Just take a couple more moments of silence and then I will read Who We Listen To Is Who We Become by Reverend Scott Taylor. Sometimes the world outside us can be so loud, making it hard to hear those voices we once knew so well. Voices that once knew us so well. And so to silence we turn, to listen for the echoes of memories that make us whole, the pain of others that reawakens our hearts, and the beauty of this wildly generous world that wants us back. In the quiet of the space, let us not just listen for clarity and guidance, but to become larger those voices whispering from deep within are not just calling us home they are home we don't have 
conversations. We are our conversations. We must remember who we listen to is who we become. What we listen for determines our path. Yes, sometimes the world outside us can be so loud. And so, may the stillness we find here companion us and care for us, ensuring that we never get lost. So may it be. Take a moment of silence. I offer Reverend Scott Taylor's words again. Listening for new words. Sometimes the world outside us can be so loud, making it hard to hear those voices we once knew so well. Voices that once knew us so well. And so to silence we turn to listen for the echoes of memories that make us whole, the pain of others that reawakens our hearts, and the beauty of this wildly generous world that wants us back. In the quiet of this space, in the quiet of this space, let us not just listen for clarity and guidance, but to become larger. Those voices whispering from deep within are not just calling us home, they are home. We don't have conversations, we are our conversations. We must remember who we listen to is who we become. What we listen for determines our path. Yes, sometimes the world outside us can be so loud and so, may the stillness we find here companion us and care for us, ensuring that we never get lost. So may it be. Amen.
Then it's your turn to sing. Uh, this next song is Breaths, a lovely traditional song. Uh, you may know it from many, many different versions and arrangements. Feel free to kind of sway as you like and uh, join in. The words will be on the screen. I haven't done this song. This is a new one for me. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I think we should do it all month. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, for sure. I would like to invite Star back up to extinguish our chalice for us. Have we got Star with us? Who I would like to invite John Turley. Turvey. <laughs> to extinguish the chalice for us. And the words are by Reverend Emily Garr. To listen, deeply listen, and be deeply listened to. May we open our hearts and minds to one another and the world. May we let ourselves be changed by the stories around us. May we deeply listen and be deeply listened to and be held in silence and in love. And so may it always be. Thank you. I offer you these words of benediction as we close out our service. There's a couple of more elements. But before we move into that, I would like to offer these words of benediction. Do not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world. Things can break, but things can, can be mended, but not with time, as they say, with intention. So go and love intentionally. And today I would have to add, go and listen intentionally. And go and love intentionally. And go and love extravagantly. For the broken world waits in darkness. For the light that was within you. 
Coriolis is now going to sing our, our um, postlude, after which Sylvia will have a message for us before Carry the Flame. Sylvia Crow, the chair of the Child Haven Committee. As you know, that there will be a Child Haven event happening at the church starting at 12:30. However, you're all welcome to stay until 12:30, and please bid on any of the silent auction and bazaar items that are for sale outside. As you know, it's a very worthwhile cause. Um, we also, within the next hour, have to transfer this room <laughs> into seating for 150 people. And so if any of you would be willing to help to set up the tables and so on, um, this will be led by Andy. Andy, will you please stand and wave? <laughs> yeah. So please follow his directions. He's a wonderful planner, and he's uh, got it had all worked out. Um, so, um, and at the end of the event, if any of you are staying for the Child Haven event, um, we do need to transform this church back into what it was originally, and so we'd appreciate your help with that as well. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you all so much for being with us this morning. Um, for the choir for all their, all their hard work. Uh, thank you for all of those who are with us online. It is good to be together. It is our custom and tradition to rise in body and spirit. If you wish, join hands as we join in singing our final song, Carry the Flame. <laughs> 